Hi, I'm Tom R., Interim Pastor of Fourth Presbyterian Church. It is such an honor to serve you in this important time of transition. So several times a year, I want to provide a brief video like this for you to provide some updates on life here at Fourth. I want to talk with you today about four things. First, our financial situation. Second, the census project that is now complete. Third, the long-range plan that your session has adopted. And fourth, a word about your amazing pastor nominating committee. So first, our financial situation. In December, I shared with you that the 2023 budget included a deficit of about $2.1 million. Now, this did not happen just because I arrived. No, this has been an increasing reality in our budgeting over years, decades, really. The session has set aside funds received from bequest to cover our deficit. But using non-recurring gifts like bequest for operations, it's not a wise path going forward. Now, I've got some good news. We ended 2023 much better than budgeted, not with a $2.1 million deficit, but through reduced expenses and increased generosity, we cut about 900,000 of that deficit. Therefore, we ended with a $1.2 million deficit rather than 2.1. That's better than we feared, but we still have a way to go. So what do we do? We didn't get to this point overnight, and we can't redress this circumstance immediately. This year, 2024, the session cut over 260000 from the budgeted deficit. But more than that, the session and trustees have endorsed a commitment to reduce the deficit completely by 2028. In essence, we're going to be cutting that deficit by a third in 2025, 26, and 27. We've already begun that work, but it's not simple. And it's going to require these things. Either reducing or eliminating some ministry and mission, or increasing our generosity so that the ministry we feel called to do can continue. Likely, it'll be a combination of those two. So I want to sincerely thank you for your generosity. As you know, the remarkable work done through this fourth church family. I invite you to lean in now and help us continue this good work. We set a robust pledge goal for 2024, and we're almost 90% of our way there, but we need another $389,000 to fully subscribe our pledge goal. So if you haven't made a pledge, I hope you will. It'll really make a difference. If you have pledged and can increase it, I invite you to do that too. My wife, Carol, and I have pledged a fourth, in part because it's a practice of our faith and has been all of our marriage, and in part because every day we watch the holy ministry that you make happen, and we want to be part of that. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the census project. Last year, you recognized the fourth had not engaged in an effort to clarify our membership roles since 2011. It's time. We need to know who our membership is if we're going to faithfully care for one another. An exhaustive effort was made to contact every member and ask, are you still part of the fourth church family or are you elsewhere? Thank you for your response. At its May meeting, the session approved a membership of 3,138. This is a number in which we have high confidence as it's required everyone to opt in, in essence, to reaffirm their commitment to this church family. Now, that number is less than you have been in decades past, and we should be aware that some will receive this, as, this news as a sign that we're not who we've been. Some will lament that our days of being significant are lie behind us. 
I encourage you not to embrace that narrative of lament. How many members we have is important because it impacts our capacity. When there are more of us, we can do more. But we are, as a church, not defined by our congregational size, but by our convictions, and our convictions remain unchanged. It is incumbent upon us at this time to lean into the heart of this congregation, which is defined by our commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we don't celebrate a decline in membership, but neither do we fear it. Someone asked me, Tom, how does the rest of the PCUSA USA look at us now? Let me give you some context. In 2022, the last data we have, 66% of all congregations in our denomination had a membership of 100 or less. Congregations that have 1,600 members or more constitute less than one half of 1% of all congregations in the PCUSA. Fourth remains a place of significance and a responsibility of leadership. Some things are gonna be harder now but do not accept the narrative of lament. The blessing of God remains rich with us these days. The census has also taught us something else about ourselves. We have learned that 19.6% of our membership live outside of the state of Illinois. Uh, that's not just people who once lived here to move to Florida or California or even Kansas, I have been told. No, in the last group of new members welcomed by your session, 30% of that group live out of state. You have always been called to be a light in the city, but there are people across the country now who are discovering your light. Our membership touches 39 different states. That means that over the next five to 10 years, we will need to transform our online ministry so that we do not simply allow our friends from afar to watch us be church, but we create platforms and opportunities for us to be church online. Yeah. We are in a new day in American Christianity, and you are poised to be leaders in this new practice of church. A third thing, let me tell you a bit about our long range plan that's been approved by the session. This plan indicates where we need to focus in the coming years. The first calling will focus on being a place where faith is nourished and developed. You are so good at that. And we will continue this core calling of the church through relevant worship and excellent education for starters. Secondly, we are reinvesting ourselves in being a place of holy friendship Study after study indicates that we are in an increasingly lonely nation. This was only exacerbated by the shutdown where all of us had to develop new patterns living largely apart from community. When I was in college, I got a job being the choir director of a Baptist church in South Carolina. I was no John Scherer, I can tell you that but I came to love those people and they loved me too. But one of the things they often talked about was what they called their conversion story. They talked about how Jesus came into their hearts. That wasn't common vocabulary for me. I'm Presbyterian. We might be more comfortable thinking about how Jesus comes into our minds. But the truth is, Jesus doesn't really come into our hearts or in our heads. Jesus comes into our relationships. This faith calls us to love one another. So Christ shows up in that space between us. Christ shows up when we are together. We at Forth are doubling down on our care and fellowship and friendship with one another. In this lonely culture, I can't think of anyone who wouldn't benefit from a place of friendship. The third focus of this plan is, as always, Fourth Church will be a place of mission. God has not called us 
to this play, to this corner of Michigan Avenue in Delaware for our benefit alone. We are here to reflect the light of Christ to the city and beyond. And lastly, the plan says if we're going to do these three things with excellence, we will need to secure sustaining resources to ensure we move from strength to strength. This month, the session will meet in retreat and we'll begin to prioritize how we will live out this long range plan, how we will become more magnetic and more robust. It is an exciting time. Now, my last word on Pentecost, that wonderful day in the church, you elected a stellar pastor nominating committee. It is an amazing collection of faithful and trusted members of this congregation, co-chaired by Gene Bishop and Carrie Grady. They've already begun their work to search for your next pastor. There's never been a time when you haven't been blessed with amazing pastors. Honestly, I marvel at the talent and care that I see in my pastoral colleagues here right now. I watch with gratitude the courageous and compassionate ministry of my friend Shannon Kirshner. And in my time with you, my appreciation for her gifts has only increased. And I, along with many, watched from afar the bold ministry of John Buchanan. He was so thoughtful and stood so tall in difficult times. And some of you have shared, I was here when Elam Davies was our pastor. Your own history shows that God is faithful in bringing you just the right person for just the right time. Well, God is still God. So this is a time of excited anticipation as we await to see who God will call next, just the right person for just this time. Now that search will take a little while. A good rule of thumb is that a search could take a year, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but it won't happen right away. So I invite you to join me in praying for this pastor nominating committee. Now, if you're still hanging in with this message, I thank you for listening. You're a remarkable church that God has richly blessed, and it is my honor to serve you in this interim time. Thanks again, and I'll see you in church.